Leading Ideas Talks podcast is brought to you by the Lewis Center for Church Leadership of Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, D.C. Subscribe free to our weekly e-newsletter, Leading Ideas, at churchleadership.com slash leading ideas. Leading Ideas Talks is also brought to you by Nature, our first way of knowing God. This seven-session video-based adult Christian study recognizes our innate and embedded knowing of God in and through God's creation. Nature, our first way of knowing God, includes videos, discussion questions, and a suggested weekly spiritual practice in nature that can be done either individually or as a group. Learn more and watch an introductory video at churchleadership.com slash nature. And remember to stay up to date with the latest church leadership strategies and information. Please like and subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get updates for new videos. What can we learn from the Fresh Expression Movement's novel approach to reaching people unlikely to attend church on Sunday mornings? In this episode, Luke Edwards discusses a process of listening and relationship building that can lead to deepening discipleship and the formation of new non-traditional worshiping communities. I'm Ann Michael. I'm one of the editors of Leading Ideas e-newsletter, and I'm so pleased to be the host of this episode of Leading Ideas Talks. I'm talking today with Luke Edwards, who's the founder of King Street uh, Church in Boone, North Carolina. He's also Associate Director of Church Development for the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. Uh, And in that capacity, he has helped to start scores of fresh expressions of church. And he's also the author of Becoming Church, a trail guide for fresh expressions. So welcome, Luke. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So um, a lot of your work as a church developer has focused on fresh expressions of church. And I think some of our listeners may not be familiar with that term. So can you just give a simple explanation of what a fresh expression is? Sure. Um, Fresh expressions simply are just new forms of church, specifically for folks that wouldn't come to church on Sunday mornings. Um, so they often meet out in the community. Uh, they're often a, a lot smaller than a traditional form of church, 15 to 40 people. It's the average size. Um, and they're conversational. They uh, often begin with uh, a communal activity or a, a shared interest. Um, and we seek to form church with this group of people that we uh, wouldn't expect to see at church on Sunday mornings. Um, And it's a a movement that started in the UK uh, in 2004 uh, in the Anglican Church there and has come over to the U.S. and uh, really um, caught in uh, uh, fire with uh, particularly the mainline uh, traditions here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So um, in your book, you write that fresh expressions create social community before they create spiritual community. And I think in most cases, that's probably precisely the opposite of way the way most people have come into traditional churches where they might uh, get involved first through worship and then get involved in a social group or a small group. So can you comment on that difference and why it's important? Yeah, so Fresh Expression is really born out of uh, post-Christian reality. So um, in a... Christendom uh, society where church is uh, normal and common, then yes, it's not too hard for someone to enter into a church through a worship service. Uh, But in a post-Christian reality, which uh, more and more of the United States is uh, becoming this, um, and pretty soon we'll we'll all be uh, uh, in a post-Christian reality, then um, it's a really difficult jump for someone who's not used to Christianity, to the language, to the practices, to the beliefs, to enter into a worship service um, where everyone seems to kind of agree on what they believe and uh, where everyone's sharing a language that uh, they don't understand. Um, and so Fresh Expressions then uh, has to flip that and, and say, let's, let's build relationships Uh, let's uh, start with where people are with their uh, spiritual practices or spiritual beliefs um, and walk alongside folks as they journey towards uh, becoming Christian. And, and, and then as, as this group 
uh, journeys together, um, sometimes it, that group becomes a church in itself, a, a fresh expression of church. Yeah, so I know some of these communities will form around particular interests or activities or affinities. Um, could you give a couple of examples of, of the way some of these communities have taken shape? Sure. Um, so we've got a church uh, here in Charlotte, um, uh, just north of Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, um, called West UMC, and they have a network of fresh expressions. And so they've, uh, over the past several years, started um, multiple. So um, they've got a, a, their first one was a yoga gathering. So they um, had a, a, a back room of a pub where they uh, hosted a, a yoga on Friday nights. Um, and incorporated some uh, Christian spiritual practices into that uh, yoga practice. Uh, so that was their first one. Now they have a, a golfing group. They have um, a, a group that goes out on Lake Norman to paddleboard and to uh, meditate. They have a, a group called Alive at 55, which is uh, old, older adults who are um, getting together to share life together. Um, and they introduce these uh, spiritual conversations to those groups. They uh, pray together. They um, seek to be a, a new form of church together. That um, they also have a, a really cool um, uh, new faith community forming called Growth Co, which is um, uh, targeted at uh, Gen Z. Um, and so this a group that connects online, but also gets together, goes and uh, sings karaoke together and, and uh, eats dinner together, has spiritual conversations around the table. So um, so that's one example of, of what that can look like. It's uh, not necessarily complicated, but yeah, just finding a way to bring people together and, and introduce conversations about faith. Yeah, so uh, from the perspective of someone who might be interested in joining a yoga class or an Alive at 55 group, um, you know, given the post-Christian reality that you've just described, does this ever feel like bait and switch? I mean, like, oh, I thought I was joining a golf group and now it's a prayer group. <laughs> yeah, so it has to be done with intentionality. Otherwise, it will become something like that, because that's the last thing we want is for a fresh expression to be manipulative or a, a bait and switch. Um, and so uh, there's a few ways that uh, we teach our folks how to avoid that. So one is to just uh, be clear about um, this is a, a spiritual group. It's a group that wants to talk about spiritual, have spiritual conversations um, and, uh, and actually a lot of our neighbors who aren't a part of the church want to have those kinds of conversations. Um, we have, uh, no, no shortage of, uh, spirituality in our communities, even in our uh, most post Christians, uh, communities, we just have a shortage of people that want to be a part of a institutional form of church. Um, and, and so the, that's one way. Another way is, um, there's a fresh expression in, in the UK um, called Sorted, and it's a, a youth skater church. And how they did this was um, they formed a Friday night uh, skate for youth where these uh, youth are um, welcome to come eat pizza, skate together. The adult volunteers kind of make sure it remains a safe space. And, um, and there's not a spiritual element happening at that particular gathering. Um, but as they built relationships, as the kids got to know these adults, some of them started asking them questions about faith, about asking for prayer for different uh, things. And so they started a Wednesday night um, skate uh, and Jesus story. So uh, in addition, to, they kept the Friday night going. So that's a kind of purely social gathering mm -hmm. on that uh, Friday night. And then on Wednesday night, have this spiritual conversation. And, you know, they might have 75 kids on the Friday night and only 15 or 20 um, on Wednesday, but that's 15, 20 kids that weren't going to church or connected to church in any way. So. Yeah. So I believe that I read that um, all of the fresh expressions that you've worked with in North Carolina are anchored to a standing church uh, in some way. And so I wondered, what does that mean? And, and how does it work? Yeah, so I think that's um, one of the real gifts of the Fresh Expressions uh, movement and the language um, is this uh, language of the blended ecology of um, new forms of church and traditional forms of church working together, um, reaching different people. Um, and so in, in my context in the uh, Western North Carolina Conference, 
Um, we're intentional about anchoring our fresh expressions into uh, congregations, both for um, accountability, um, but also just uh, a, a way of helping our um, traditional churches, our traditional forms of churches to um, reach out into their community. It's a, a, a new way of outreach, a new way of um, of connecting with people that wouldn't come to church on Sunday morning. So I, we kind of view it like a, you would with a, a campus, uh, like it's like a mini campus maybe, or um, you might view it as a, a ministry of that church, but um, it's a, a new form of church in itself. It's a, uh, we're not trying to get those folks to come on Sunday mornings, um, but there's, yeah, that, that relationship between the, the leaders of that fresh expression and the, the Sunday morning church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I could follow up on that a bit, I mean, I, I know that the goal is not necessarily to bring the people who are engaged with a fresh expression, you know, it's not necessarily going to be a pipeline for them to come and become more traditional worshipers. So I guess the question I wanted to ask is, um, what is it that makes a fresh expression, a full expression of church rather than just a fellowship group? I don't mean to say just, but rather yeah. than a fellowship group or a small group or a Sunday school class uh, or something like that. Yeah. So one of the other helpful um, ideas about fresh expressions is what, what I wrote the book about was uh, that the process of starting a fresh expression is called the fresh expressions journey. Um, and so it's a process of moving from uh, listening to relationship building to community to discipleship to church. Um, and so uh, our, all of our fresh expressions in Western North Carolina are somewhere on that journey. Uh, so we might have some that are at this point, just a fellowship gathering, uh, but it's relationship building that's happening. It's community building. And they're, the leaders are intentionally looking for opportunities to move into discipleship. Um, and so for us, we, we have this language of mature expression of church, which would uh, be one of our fresh expressions that we can say without a doubt is church. Um, so uh, River of Life uh, is one of those in Bryson City. Um, they've been uh, around for 15 years, um, and it's a kayaking community. Mm -hmm. um, there's worship happening. There's prayer happening. They take an offering together, um, and and uh, the, the word is proclaimed. They are, uh, you know, outwardly and inwardly focused. There's all, all these different things that, that we look for as marks of the church. They check those boxes off in new and creative ways. It's not all on a Sunday morning. Um, it doesn't look the same as a, a, a worship service, but, um, but yeah, they check those boxes out. And so we feel confident saying, Hey, this is, this is church. Yeah. So you, you named, uh, you kind of slipped in there uh, a sequence of listening and <laughs> disciples. Can you just repeat that make that a little sure. more explicit? Because I know it's emphasized in your book. Yeah. That, 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 that roadmap, your trail yep. guide has the roadmap. So can you just <laughs> name those things? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. The Fresh Expressions Journey. So it's these six, uh, it's often illustrated as six circles. Um, and it emerged in the UK as well. Um, and so that first, uh, and the first, it's the six steps that most fresh expressions will move through. Um, it looks linear and clean. It's obviously messy in, in, in practice. Um, but yeah, it starts with a process of listening. So intentional listening to the community, to your neighbors, to, um, to what your community cares about, what is missing, what, uh, the strengths are, what the, um, the gaps are, um, in the community that, that listening process. And then out of that, uh, you're building relationships, uh, you're loving, uh, people in your community, um, kind of trying to invest in new friendships, invest in, uh, existing friendships in deeper ways. I'm really trying to put yourself out there as a fresh expressions leader, a fresh expressions team, um, and out of that, starting to discern uh, who you might connect with. Um, and so out of that discernment, you begin a gathering. Uh, so you start building community. Um, you might have some one-time events and then starting to kind of build an ongoing gathering, um, a, re a repeatable um, gathering where community is built. Um, and then out of that um, community, you look for an opportunity to explore discipleship with some or all of the group that you've connected with. 
Um, and as disciples, disciples are formed and, and grown, um, then you look to become church together. Um, and then often one fresh expression becomes multiple like that West UMC. Um, and so you do it again. Um, yeah. and so that's that process. But it's almost the exact reverse flow of the way we do it traditionally. So, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I mean I'm thinking about these steps, and as I, it's, it's almost exactly the reverse. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, um, most of our listeners, they're not church planters, they're not church developers like you are. Um, they're sort of your run of the mill pastors and lay leaders. Um, and they're probably never going to start a faith community at a laundromat or in a brew pub. And so, I, I wondered if there are any lessons from your work for people who are ministering in more traditional contexts. Yeah, uh, well, kind of what you just said, that that uh, how Fresh Expressions kind of does it opposite. I, I, I think this is the way that we should be starting uh, new initiatives in our churches is through a posture of listening first. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and yeah, I think we, we like to go to conferences and, uh, read blogs about a cool idea that somebody had and say, oh yeah, we could do that. And you start with that program first. Um, I think what fresh expressions has taught me is that, um, really the church should be focused on building community, uh, whether that's starting a fresh expression or, um, whether that's leading, uh, small groups or, um, whether that's, um, rethinking, um, your, your Sunday morning, um, gathering, I I think, uh, community, uh, focusing on building community over focusing on populating programs, I think is a, a really important, um, lesson for the, for the whole church. Yeah. I, I wonder too, whether, you know, there are a lot of churches that have adjacent communities already, whether it's a scout troop or a daycare or a AA group or, you know, groups that are um, either meeting in their church building or in some ways extensions of their ministry. Are there ways in which some of the lessons of how you cultivate people through fresh expression might be outreach tools for those kinds of communities? Definitely. Uh, I think, there's a lot of almost fresh expressions out there um, in, in our churches. You know, um, you know, it. the The question is, are those relationships there? Because I think some of those things you described, often it's a building use relationship. Right. Um, but there's others that, that are uh, relationship building. You know, we've got a, a uh, food pantry um, ministry at a church in Blowing Rock, uh, North Carolina, who had the same people coming every Tuesday, Thursday, um, and they had built relationships. They knew them, they were praying Mm -hmm. for them. And so they started a communion service. And so I'd call that a fresh expression of church right there. Um, And it it was, you know, they just had one more step that they could do with their food ministry. Uh, But that relationship part is really essential. Yeah, it's almost connecting the dots with some of the mission that churches are already doing. Because I think sometimes we see mission as, as, you know, so detached from the the spiritual life of the church or something that comes at the end of the spiritual journey. So I, I, I love the way this is a much more integrative approach. Um, what One of the themes in your book is uh, this epidemic of loneliness that mm-hmm. is endemic in American culture, and that was even before the pandemic. And so I, I just wondered if you could speak to that and maybe what the church's calling is in response to that. Um, and so I, I think loneliness is, uh, it's different than isolation. So it's a perceived lack of meaningful connection. Um, mm-hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have social interactions. It means that you're perceiving a lack of meaningful interaction. And so, uh, yeah, there's a, a, a ton of Americans who feel lonely. Our, our, uh, we have something also called the friendship ep- epidemic or friendship decline. Um, so we have less friends, less quality friends. Um, I, I think part of this is uh, social media has created a lot of connections, um, but drained us of a lot of meaningful connections that we used to have. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, you know part of it is we're we're moving more, we're uh, we're more mobile, um, we're busier than we've ever been with extracurricular activities and work and um, family, all these different things, um, which has led to yeah just. If you look at half the people you see at the grocery store, 
um, you can assume that half of them are, are lonely. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's this huge um, issue that every single one of our churches could, could walk out the door and know that that's something that they could address. Um, yeah. and, and so if that's something we're going to address, we need to create meaningful connection. Um, and so I think fresh expressions is one way to do that, but, you know, so is, um, you know, getting lunch with, uh, your neighbors or, um, just being intentional about relationships with people that, you know, um, mm -hmm. starting, starting to assume that the people you interact with are lonely, um, or even and, people already within our churches. I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe suffering from loneliness. I mean, I, just to add to what you said about some of the causes of this, I mean, I think this is a trend that's been going on for a long time. And I mean, if you're familiar with like Robert Putnam and Bowling Alone and the decline of not just the church, but other, you know, social institutions within right. within the broader community and also the trend of people living alone. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just a few years ago that the, the balance tipped that there are more Americans living in single households than, you know, in, in, in a family household. And so I, I think yeah. you're really onto something with that. Um, if I can move on, um, you know, a lot of the uh, fresh expressions that you've described and some of the other ones that I'm familiar with involve people gathering around either a particular interest, like, you know, you mentioned yoga or golf or woodworking or whatever, or, you know, meeting in a particular place like a bar or a community dinner or something like that. And so I'm really wondering, um, how have these fresh expressions changed uh, in an era of social distancing? Yeah, so the pandemic was really hard on our fresh expressions. Um, in, in Western North Carolina, we had over 100 churches that were working on starting dinner churches. And almost all of those uh, pumped the brakes as soon as the pandemic hit. A, a few of them transitioned to um, drive through ministries where there was kind of providing meals and people were driving through. Um, a few of them experimented with Zoom, um, but there was, uh, it, it just didn't quite uh, fit with a lot of our fresh expressions. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty devastating, our fresh expressions movement for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, our, to start a fresh expression is so, um, so personal and social and relationship focus um, that it was really difficult to do that in uh, in lockdown um, and social distancing. So there really was kind of this this um, period where only a few of our fresh expressions were able to adapt uh, quickly. Um, we do have some faith communities in our uh, conference that are our digital communities. And so those just kind of uh, really took off. We also had a couple of outdoor gatherings that were able to really maintain um, uh, their momentum even better than their anchor churches, which was interesting. You know, we had like that river of life one with the mm -hmm. um, paddlers. There was another uh, group called Lake church um, where those almost became the anchor church for a while um, because the, the indoor gatherings weren't happening. And so the church has kind of shifted to those outdoor ones. Um, so yeah, it, it was a difficult time, but I, I think um, as we've uh, become vaccinated and as um, we've become more used to um figuring out how to gather our fresh expressions are, are really picking up and those you know those gatherings of 15 to 40 feel a lot more comfortable than a gathering of 300 right now um, mm -hmm. and so so they are picking up now yeah so I, I guess that leads me to ask you know with so much interest in uh, online ministry and, and digital ministry uh, you know particularly uh, beginning and through the pandemic have you had any experience with creating fresh expressions that are uh, purely in online space, or do you see that as a direction that the movement might go in? Yeah, I think it's going to be a part of it. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, several um, purely digital faith communities, purely digital fresh expressions. Um, uh, I think you, you guys have had um, Michael Beck on before. Yeah. He's got mm -hmm. Living Room Church, which is right. uh, both has a Facebook group uh, church and also a, a, they've started recently a VR um, gathering. We had a, a VR fresh expression in Western North Carolina that was kind of story based. Um, and, and yeah, I think all what, definitely what I'm seeing now is that all of our or almost all of our fresh expressions have some kind of digital presence as well as being in person. 
Um, I, I think, uh, so one one more example, we got Checkpoint Church, which is a, a church plant in Western North Carolina Conference. It's for game, gamers, geeks, and um, uh, and nerds, and and so they have uh, a stream on Twitch, which is kind of their proclamation, uh, the that kind of audience building um, gathering, and then they have a Discord channel where folks can interact together, build community, pray together, um, be the church there. So that's. That's one example of a fully digital faith community, but that's a group of people that are digital natives. Um, and so, yeah, um, you pretty much lost me in the description. So. <laughs> yeah. So, so for, for a specific part of our society that a fully digital faith community works for them, but I think for a large portion of our society, um, they want that in real life, IRL, um, faith community as well. Um, you know, spring tide research had some stuff on, uh, email sent out the other week, um, about Gen Z that a large percentage of them actually aren't interested in a fully digital faith community. Mm -hmm. Um, and yet most of our fresh expressions that we're starting now have a, a digital element to them. You know, I, I lead, a uh, fresh expression, uh, in, in Huntersville called who let the dads out. Uh, it's a dad's group. And, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we gather once a month, do something fun with our kids. Uh, but we also have a Facebook group or, or group texts that are happening that, you know, we're, we're interacting throughout the month in that digital space. Oh, that sounds great. Um, Luke, it's been fantastic to talk to you today. I've learned so much from what you're doing, and I'm also really admiring of, of all that you've accomplished in, in this ministry and your time in the Western North Carolina Conference. So um, thanks for sharing with our listeners uh, your learnings, and it's been great to talk to you. Thanks, thanks for so joining much. us for Leading Ideas Talks. Please like and subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get updates for new videos.